This week's teaching challenger turns automobiles into objects of art for rock stars, film stars and ordinary punters who've fallen in love with their cars. Lance McCormick operates from a picturesque workshop in Ealing. He's fused the traditional and fast disappearing craft of the coach builder with a passion for timeless style. The successful business he runs rejoices in the name Romance of Rust. Well, this is the Romance of Rust, where I earn my living and have a bit of fun and meet interesting people and do what I do best, which is metalwork with a little team we have here. Lance McCormick has been invited to teach a Year 10 graphics class at St Mark's Catholic School in Hounslow. The invitation has been issued by Deputy Head, Mr Stuart Alexander. What we're aiming to do is to pull somebody in from the local community to inspire the children in their graphics classes. What we've got is an inspirational person, someone who can come in and actually show them the practical skills, those vocational skills that education is so important these days. Uh, to impart them to the children and to take them forward and just show them that education is not solely about things learned out of a textbook or from a computer screen. Lance. Oh, hi, Stuart. Hi, oh, nice to meet you. Welcome, eh? Bright and early, oh, Mr. Alexander so arrives yeah, at Lance's well, you know workshop to find out about his work and to plan the lesson. Uh, this is a Mark II Jaguar. So, the name of the business is The Romance of Rust. Yeah. So, why do you pick that name? Well, it's just something that came straight out of my subconscious, but it is exactly that. There's a, there's a great degree of romance around these rusty vehicles, and I could see that time and time and time again. Uh, it's, it's, it's a brand that could only exist at a certain level. I'm never going to be Stussy or Coca-Cola or Nike or whatever, and I haven't got the opportunity to change every year, but it, it's something... You're making a statement. Well, one of the things that we could talk about is we've got a Year 10 graphics class. And one of the things they've been looking at is case studies of branding, yep. case studies of packaging. So I think we can take the idea of the romance of Ruff, take it into the pupils, and we can actually even start off a lesson by saying, OK, this is the name of my business. Yeah. Why do you think I've chosen this as a name? Yep. And we can get them thinking about the ideas behind that concept. Because yeah. there are a lot of ideas behind that concept. Yeah, aren't there? Yeah. You, know, you haven't just picked it for no reason. You're actually trying to suggest something to people. After talking about the concept, so it's Lance, time for Stuart and Lance to get through down through to lesson planning. Lesson well, if we now start talking about the structure of the lesson and okay. see how we can work that for you. Was that a we? You're going to be there, yeah? I'll be there. I'll oh, be sitting back. in the back observing you, give a bit of feedback at the okay. end and see how it's gone. Okay, yep. so what we're going to have is we're going to have a mixed ability class. We're going to be Year 10 GCSE students following a course in graphics. Right, okay, so you, you'll be able to give me some pointers because I'm, I'm anxious to get my stuff across. I think what pupils like, they like to know a bit about you. So okay. they want to know a bit about you as the context. What do they know are. so far? What have you told they them? They know nothing so far. Oh, that's good. That's okay. good. So I certainly give them some background context. Who you are, what you do, okay. where you come from. And then what we need to say is we need to start off with some kind of activity. And I think an easy start activity for the pupils in this instance is for you just to ask them a few questions about the romance of Russ. Why does it think that? Get a bit of a question and answer session going with them. Okay. Yep. Okay. And, then and see what responses they give you. Well, I, I can equally, I can get back to them. There, there was one particular customer that comes to mind that typified why that name is. And, and he came to me with a modest classic from the 50s. And I said, why do you want to put so much money and care into this car? You just want to win shows. No, 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 he said. When we used to go to our country house in Hampshire when I was a boy, I used to fall asleep in the back of one of these cars. I want to recreate something there for my children, of that pleasure that it gave me going to our country house. And, and we're going to have the same smells, the same sounds of the wheel bearings, you know, the same light levels, uh, and, of course, the same speeds, and some would argue the same roads. Uh, and it's, 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 a, it's like a time machine. And that's yeah. what we're trying to get across to the pupils, aren't we? That this concept of packaging and branding yeah. is actually selling a whole will lifestyle. They get, will they get that? I'm not trying to undermine their intelligence. Will, will they get that whole mind trip part of it as well? Because it, it, it's, it's all in there with these people. I think that's the challenge for us, isn't it, in the lesson? Yeah. This is what we're trying to bring alive to them. Okay. Then we need them to move into a main activity. And what do we want the pupils to do? Uh, and we should be getting onto that activity within a sort of 10, 15 minutes of the lesson. Right. So perhaps an activity would be for them to give them a number of potential customers who might come into your shop and then say to them, well, OK, this customer comes in and wants this. And yep. you could think of several scenarios. Right. And then what they can then do is they can work on paper, work on computer, design what they think well, they the, should look like. The great like. thing we do here, 
and, it, and because I still deal with ex-craftsmen from Rolls-Royce, is that we don't just bolt bits on. We no, make things. Make. We actually make them. And then once their pupils have done that, we need to give them some feedback on what they've done, and we need to find out if they've understood what we set out to achieve. So we need to do some kind of plenary. Uh, and there are many plenaries you can do. One I used just the other day was to extend the sentence. So, you know, what that simply means is that we give them a sentence, uh, and then what the pupils have to do is to extend that sentence to make it longer, to make it more, using connectives. So, for instance, we could say, um, the, we use the romance of Rust because it. Oh, okay. Yep. And then they yep. have to sort yep. of extend that sentence and say, why are they using it? What is it about it? What, what, what design features have they used? You know, design is important because. Yep. And we get them to extend the sentence for okay. that. So, if I love you and leave you, okay. get back to uh, the ranch. Okay, and uh, I'll see you soon to uh, That's lovely. go right. through the lesson. Fantastic. I Brilliant. Look, I look forward to it ish. I know. Okay. You'll be fine. Okay. Take care. See ya. It's now mid afternoon and Lance has left well, the security I, I of his workshop and is facing a class for, for the first time in his life. Years now. And I call it the romance of Rust because primarily we restore cars. And would you have any understanding as to why I call my company the romance of Rust? Because Rust being something hideous and horrid and, and that the other in romance is what we all aspire to at some point in our lives, you know? Are you targeting like cars that are, people that have cars that are all like old and rusty and all that? Yeah, well, it's, it's exactly that, and they want some sort of rebirth, like a renaissance of, of their old car. They want that, they're very style literate, you know, generally they're people that have incredible lifestyles away from just their cars. But uh, they, they, will, they will spend close to £100,000 on a car that may only have a market value of, say, 10 or 20 when it's finished, but they want that to be as new. They, they like the journey, you know, and they like that romantic notion of bringing something back and caressing it back into the 21st century, you know. With the starter activity out of the way, Lance moves on to the main design activity for this graphics class. I'm actually moving my workshop soon. I'm looking for a new logo to go on my new business cards and my new letter headings, and in fact the sign above the workshop. And obviously it's the romance of rust. Uh, I'm aware of you guys involved, uh, are involved in graphics, and I was wondering if you could put sort of pen to paper and come up with some uh, sort of sketchy ideas. Yeah. I know it's a bit of a big order, but if you could allow for about 10 minutes to get something together, uh, something very basic, and if you've got any questions at all about where you need to be with it, just fire them at me, you know, but I'll, I'll recognise your input, whatever you put forward there. It doesn't need to be fussy, it needs to have an immediate impact, you know, because people are rather fickle, they need to look and if there is something detailed in there, you know, it needs to be a hook. But basic silhouettes work, you know. This is good, this is good. a heart with an exhaust, I like that. So how would you work on the computers like this thing? What programs would you draw, pull up to, if, you, if you had to design this computer-wise rather than pencils? I would probably use fireworks. Mm -hmm. don't, don't always have your head, head down at the computer screen. Sometimes look up above, look at what's at the top of the buildings, you know, look at the way that trees move, because there's inspiration all around you. Nature's a great provider there, you know. OK, f finish off now and I'll come around and uh, pick up your ideas, if that's OK. So, right, thank you. Good. Having collected the classwork, uh, Lance much. moves rather swiftly uh, to a final Q&A session. Has, has anyone got any more questions about what we do? You know? What made you want to do what you do? You know, like, fix you want cars. the real story? Yeah. Yeah, well, OK, my last two years of school, uh, I failed to be there. I went on the missing list and embarked on a, a sort of wave of crime, which ended me up being arrested and charged four times for various offences. And then I blagged my way into a, um, an interview at Rolls-Royce, and this is back in 1976 now, and managed to impress them, and also had a sense that perhaps it was time for me to change, because these guys offered me an apprenticeship. They didn't know anything about my past, I managed to conceal that, and I knew, there was a little spark inside me that said, this is your chance, boy. You know, you're, this is the only chance, perhaps, you're gonna have a straightening yourself out, and that's exactly what I did. I ended up as the youngest ever inspector at Rolls-Royce. My work went into display cabinets. As a craftsman, I can take a piece of metal, which I do on a daily basis, and shape it, and I see a pure line. I can get the car painted in a tone, and I can tell you if it's out, if it doesn't match that. You know, I work in shape, light, and form, and, and these, are, these are my tools here, you know. And um, I'd love to get more involved in the computer side of it, but I kind of stick with what I know, you know. And if it means getting a scalpel and cutting things up, or going to paint shops, and 
drawing out, seeing a colour there and taking a snip of that and say, yeah, I'd, I'd, li I'd like that in some paint, you know, and taking it to someone to mix. That's, that's what I do. But that's how I got started. I, I got lucky. You know, I don't think there's as many chances like that out there, but if you ever feel that something is you and you can feel that little spark inside, you know, don't let it go. Gra grab hold of it because it may never come again, you know. OK, Year 10. Let's uh, thank Lance in the usual way. So a big round of applause for Lance. But how did Lance rate amongst his customers at the pupils? I thought it was quite interesting, really. It's like Pimp My Ride nowadays, modern TV programmes, but he does it for retro cars. It's good with graphics design and everything, because I'm just trying to learn that kind of thing and grow up to make something of my life. I took away a lot of knowledge about skills. I thought there was only one thing about graphics, but it broadened the horizons for graphics, so it's like really good information to like help me with my future. So we take the sort of introduction of your lesson and we look at that bit here. How did you find it trying to get them to engage in the lesson? Because they can be quite quiet, can't they? Well, yeah, they, I've got uh, uh, sons, one of a similar age to this group here, so I realise uh, it's difficult to trawl them in sometimes. But um, I found it difficult. I guess if I was going to have to be a, be a teacher, uh, I'd have to work on that, that link, that hook. Mm. Moving on a bit then, and we're looking now at the section where the children were doing the activity. Mm -hmm. How did you think the activity itself went? I think it went very well, considering we put them under such pressure. You know, they went from, from cold to that, and we only gave them you know, a handful of minutes. I mean, pace is really important, isn't it, to mm. keep the lesson moving forward? Definitely, yeah. But I think we, we, if, you, if you're looking, which I often do it for perfection in my work, I found it difficult to say, come on, you've got 10, you've got 15 minutes, mm. let's, get, let's get it mm. done, you know. I thought it was a nice activity. It was yep. a good activity, one that they could engage in. Yep, immediately. And yep. st stood alone so yep. that they can work with her. And also, you, you worked the room well. I mean, it's important that you're prepared to go into any part of the room and you went yep. and engaged with the children. If we just move a bit further forward now, we move towards the end of the lesson, the plenary, and we're seeing here that you're starting to sum up what was being said. Um, how did you find that part of the lesson? Because this is an area that teachers often find difficult, summing up what they've done, coming to some kind of conclusions, drawing together those learning objectives. It's a difficult one to get their interest, to know that you've imparted that it knowledge. It's very difficult sometimes to know whether actually learning has taken place, isn't yep, it? that's it. If you were coming now to do it again, yep. what kind of things would you tweak and change if we keep the basic structure the same? I'd bring a car and a motorcycle uh, and let them handle it and let them hear the engine, the, you know, the, the noise and the, the vibrations and the, and the smells. Yeah. They, need, they need the product. They were without the product. They were with someone that's not used to having to, kind of, I suppose, sell myself to, to yeah. youngsters, impressionable youngsters, yeah. you know. And, and I think I'd, I'd come equipped with my product, the thing that makes me me, you know. I think that'd be fantastic. Yeah. That's a way to improve what's already a good little starter and a good little session. Yeah, well, I've enjoyed it. It's been a, a learning curve for me as well. Yeah. Good.